So hello and welcome back. So in this video we want to do some exercises related to um, basically um, quadratic polynomials and some quadratic polynomials and relationships between the uh, between the, the the zeros and the and the coefficients of the polynomial. So let's say that you have, for example, some polynomial like x squared. You have some polynomial like, like x squared minus 2x minus 8. And uh, you first you want to find the zeros of this polynomial. So you can, you can factorize it and find the zeros. Meaning that you can write this as, for example, um, your you're looking for two numbers, for example, a and b, such that a times b is equal to negative 8, and a plus b is equal to negative 2. So, so for example, 1 and 8, 4 and 2, so I go for 4 and 2, and then um, negative 4 plus 2 is equal to negative 2, and negative 4 times 2 is equal to negative 8. So I write this as x squared minus 4x plus 2x minus 8. And that's equal to... I take these two together and take write this as x minus 4. And take it 2 out here. x minus 4. And that's x plus 2 times x minus 4. So that's basically the factorized version of my polynomial. So if I call this for example p of x, then this is going to be equal to p of x. Now in order to find the zeros, uh, all I need to do is that I set my polynomial to 0, so p of x is equal to 0, or x plus 2 times x minus 4 is equal to 0. So if this is equal to 0, that means that x plus 2 is equal to 0, or x minus 4 is equal to 0. And what that means is that x is equal to negative 2, or x is equal to 4. So these are the two zeros of my, of my polynomial. Now, we said that basically the relationship between uh, the relationship between the, the, the zeros of the polynomial and the, and the coefficients when it comes to uh, quadratic polynomials was that uh, was actually it's something that I must have forgotten by now but I can go back here and find it so we said that alpha plus beta alpha plus beta is equal to negative b by a and alpha beta is equal to c by a if i'm not wrong is equal to c by a so this is alpha and beta being the the zeros of the polynomial and b b a b and c here are the are the uh, basically are the the coefficients of the polynomial meaning that you can write if you write your polynomial as a x squared plus bx plus c then here you have a b and c which you can find here as well and then the zeros of this polynomial are alpha and beta and you know that this is a um, quadratic polynomial so the zeros are basically you have basically at most two zeros there so now the first one for example over here is alpha plus beta is equal to negative b by a so alpha plus beta is basically negative 2 plus 4 is equal to negative b by a so so in this polynomial your um, your basically b is negative 2 so minus or negative negative of negative 2 over a which is equal to 1 which is equal to and then um, 
negative 2 is equal to um, 4 minus, I'm sorry, 4 minus 2 is equal to positive 2, and this is positive 2. And that means that alpha plus beta is equal to negative b by a. Okay, so that is that. And also, um, uh, and also, and here, basically, if you want to make sense of what, what you have written here, I mean, logically, what that means, is that um, is that um, is that basically if you have a polynomial a x squared plus b x plus c and um, if you basically if you factorize this polynomial as for example x if let's say that your your let's say that the zeros of this polynomial are, are alpha and beta so the factorized version of this would be x minus alpha times x minus beta okay so then if you if you if you basically uh, multiply these together you'll get x squared minus uh, beta x minus alpha x plus alpha beta and that would be equal to x squared minus x times alpha plus beta plus alpha beta plus alpha beta and you see that you will get some polynomial here in terms of the in terms of the zeros of the polynomial which is basically this one over here So what I have here is is basically a x squared plus b x plus c is equal to x squared minus alpha plus beta times x plus alpha beta, and you see that in this polynomial, basically a corresponds to a corresponds to basically. And, and basically in this configuration a corresponds to 1 and b corresponds to b corresponds to negative of alpha plus beta and c corresponds to c corresponds to alpha beta okay so so if i write uh, uh, if I if I want to know basically in terms of the coefficients what for example alpha plus beta would be um, so here if I if I divided for example b by a here if I divided b by a here as you can see divide b by a that would be equal to that would be equal to negative of alpha plus beta in this polynomial would be divided by 1 okay and what that means is that b b by a is equal to negative of alpha plus beta so what that means is that alpha plus beta alpha plus beta is equal to negative b by a and that's basically what that what that actually means and again you can you can you can basically find c by a over here so c by a over here is equal to alpha beta and that's basically what that whole thing means although we have talked about this before but i just wanted to go over this concept one more time okay so that is that and we said that alpha beta is equal to c by a we said that alpha beta is equal to c by a so alpha beta is negative 2 times 4 negative 2 times 4 
is equal to c by a. Now c is equal to negative 8 divided by 1, c by a divided by 1, and that's negative 8 is equal to negative 8, which is also true. So, so again, alpha plus beta is negative b by a, and alpha beta is c by a. So that is, that is, for example, all about this polynomial. So the next question that we have is another polynomial, for example, 4s squared, 4s squared minus 4s plus 1. So first one, in order to verify the relationships between the zeros and the, and the coefficients of this polynomial, what I need to do is uh, find the zeros. So to find the zeros, I'm looking for, for example, two numbers a and b, such that uh, a times b is equal to 4 times 1, which is equal to 4, and a plus b is equal to negative 4. So I can go for negative 2 and negative 2 here. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And negative 2 plus negative 2 is equal to negative 4. So I can write this as 4s squared minus 2s minus 2s plus 1. And then I can take this, these two terms, for example, together and take a 2s out. That would be 2s minus 1. And take a negative 1 out here, that would be 2s minus 1. And then that would be 2s, 2s minus 1 times 2s minus 1. And that's the same thing as 2s minus 1 whole squared. So then basically what that means is that your polynomial is actually 2s minus 1 whole squared. Now, what that means is that if, now if you want to find the zeros, basically if you call this p of s, if you set your p of s to 0, you will find the zeros which is basically two coincident zeros in this case. So if p of p of s equal to 0, then that means that 2s minus 1 whole squared is equal to 0. That means that 2s minus 1 is equal to 0. And that means that 2s is equal to 1 and s is equal to 1 by 2. So basically you have that means that you have your s1 is equal to 1 half and your s2 is equal to 1 half. So now you can come over here and find the relationship between the zeros and the, and the coefficients. So for, so we said that alpha plus beta is equal to negative b by a, for example. So now the uh, the zeros where each of them was basically one half, so that's one half plus one half is equal to negative b by a. So negative b by a is equal to negative of negative four by four. So that is a one. That is a one is equal to one, and that's and that relationship is actually true. And also we said that alpha beta is equal to c by a. So if I write one half times one half is equal to c by a, which is equal to one over four. And that is one fourth is equal to one fourth. So that means that this is also true. So the next relationship, the next question that we have here is 6x squared. 6x squared minus 7x minus 3. 
call it p of x for example if you want to find the zeros of this polynomial you, you you're looking for two numbers a and b such that uh, such that a times b is equal to 6 times negative 3 which is equal to negative 18 and a plus b is equal to negative 7 so so for example 6 and 3 is equal to a 9 and 2 for example 9 and 2 is equal to 18 one of them make make it negative so now you have negative 9 and 2 negative 9 times 2 is equal to negative 18 and negative 9 plus 2 is equal to negative 7. So I write this as 6x squared minus 9x plus 2x minus 3. And I take these two together and I take this as 2x times 3x plus 1 minus 3 times take these two together minus 3 times 3x plus 1 and so this is equal to 2x minus 3 times 3x plus 1 okay so that is that and um, then what you have is um, so this is your p of x now if you want to find the zeros these are the factors each of these is a factor of the polynomial. Now, if you want to find the zeros of these of, of the polynomial, you need to set your polynomial equal to zero. If p of x is equal to zero, that means that two x minus three times three x plus one is equal to zero, and that's either two x minus three is equal to zero or three x plus one is equal to zero. So 2x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 3 half. Or in this case, 3x is equal to negative 1, x is equal to negative 1 thirds. So these are the, these are the two zeros of your, of your polynomial. Now again, to verify that that relationship between the roots and the coefficients, you can write alpha plus beta is equal to negative b by a so three halves plus negative one thirds is supposed to be equal to negative b by a so negative of negative seven divided by six and and so lcm six 9 plus negative uh, 2 is supposed to be equal to 7 sixths and 9 minus 2 is equal to 7 so that's 7 sixths which is equal to 7 sixths this is true so this relationship holds in this in this polynomial and moreover we said that alpha beta is equal to c by a so three half times negative one thirds is supposed to be equal to negative three by six so that's negative one half and that's equal to negative one half so that's also true So we have a couple more of these before I go any, for, any further I take a few minutes rest and I'll be back with you with the rest of this okay so we have another polynomial here a quadratic polynomial which is uh, 4u squared plus 8u for example 4u squared plus 8u and uh, Basically, what happens here is that this is uh, an interesting case where basically your c is equal to zero, meaning that you have basic, this is your a, this is your b, and your c is equal to zero. And so let's see what happens to 
the roots, the or the zeros of this polynomial. So if I take a 4u out, if I call this, for example, p of u, okay, if I take a u out, I'm sorry, if I take a 4u out here, 4u out, and that's 4 plus, uh, um, that's 4 plus um, 2. So 4u times 2 is equal to 8u, and 4u times u is equal to 4u squared. So now if I were to find, <coughs> if I were to find the, the zeros of this polynomial, I would have to set the polynomial to zero, meaning that p of u is equal to zero. And then what that means is that 4u times u plus 2 is equal to zero. Okay. So in that case, what that means is that either 4, 4u is equal to zero or u plus 2 is equal to zero. So in this case, u is equal to zero. And in this case, u is equal to negative 2. So you see when your c is equal to 0, one of your roots is actually 0, meaning that meaning that the graph of the polynomial would go through uh, would go through the origin, meaning that the graph of the polynomial would go through the origin 0 comma 0 over here. Okay? And uh, <coughs> And that's basically what happens here. So now, now that we know that what we know what our zeros are, we can go and check for those relationships. So I know that uh, alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a. So then alpha plus beta would be 0 plus negative 2, which is equal to negative 2, which is equal to negative b by a, so negative 8 by 4 negative 8 by 4, so negative 2 is equal to negative 2, and that is, that, that relationship holds. And also alpha beta is equal to c by a. So alpha beta is 0 times negative 2, which is equal to 0, is equal to c by basically a. a is equal to 4, 0 divided by 4, so 0 is equal to 0, and this relationship also holds. So what you know, what you can see over here is that when c is equal to zero, at least one of your, at least one of your, uh, uh, one of your, 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 your roots or one of your zeros is actually zero. Meaning that you can see that here u is actually, is equal to zero and also equal to negative two. So that's basically, this whole thing over here. Now the next thing that we have here is is again interesting and what that is in this case b is equal to 0 meaning that you have t squared minus 15. So t squared minus 15 and if you basically these kinds of things you can use them extensively and very well in physics. Because there are different situations where, in physics, for example, the situation is represented in terms of an algebraic equation or algebraic relationship, for example, t, t squared minus 15. And if you can, and when you look at this, this relationship, you instantan, you instantly know that, uh, you, you instantly know that basically here your b is equal to zero. So, the, here your a is equal to 1, a is equal to 1, b is equal to 0, and c is equal to negative 15. Okay? So you have your c, you have your a, but you don't, but your b is equal to 0. So what that means is that, for example, when we say alpha plus beta is equal to negative b by a, when b is equal to 0, then that means that negative b by a is equal to 0. That means that alpha plus beta is equal to zero. Okay, so that's, that's either, uh, that's either both alpha and beta is equal, are, are equal to zero, or they are basically symmetric about the, about the origin. Meaning that, for example, 
your alpha could be for example negative 2 and beta could be also could be positive 2 and then negative 2 plus 2 is equal to 0 and that's that's equal to alpha plus beta or if both of them are equal to 0 meaning that alpha is equal to 0 and beta is equal to 0 then alpha plus beta is equal to 0 so that's the different possibilities for for example um, for for example um, this kind of situation and and also what it means is that when you have for example this kind of situation you know that um, when your b is equal to zero uh, alpha beta is equal to c by a so <coughs> So it's not going to affect this 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 relationship because this relationship involves only C and A and C and A are they have I mean there is nothing uh, I mean none of them is zero so so but that, what what that means is that either your your um, <coughs> either your zeros are symmetric about the about the about the about the origin on the on the on the coordinate system or both of them are equal to zero which is of course in this case it it, it, it it's uh, it's basically the case where they are basically symmetric about the origin <coughs> so because <clears throat> because here what you have is that um, um, so here I can take a um, so if I take the, this as p of t if I take this as p of t um, what I would have I can take a um, in order to factorize this you know that we have an identity called a, a squared minus b squared and a squared minus b squared would be equal to a minus b times a plus b now if you can if i can write this this part of this polynomial like this then i'll be able to factorize it based on this side of the of the same identity so i can write it as t squared minus square root of 15 whole squared so t squared minus square root of 15 whole square square root of 15 whole square is equal to 15 so i have not changed the value of this thing over here so now i can write this as uh, <coughs> i can write this as based on this identity i can write it as t minus square root of 15 times t plus the square root of 15 okay and that's equal to p of t now if i want to find the zeros of this of this polynomial what i need to do is that i set p of t equal to zero <coughs> i need to set p of t is equal to zero if p of t is equal to zero that means that t minus square root of 15 times t plus square root of 15 is equal to zero and then what that means is that either t minus the square root of 15 is equal to zero or or t plus the square root of 15 is equal to zero in this case t is equal to square root of 15 and and in this case t is equal to minus square root of 15 okay so So that is that, and now in order to find the the relationships between between the roots and the coefficients, we said that alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a. <coughs> so you see that the the sum of the the sum of the in this case as we as as we predicted. The sum of the roots are symmetric about the origin. That means that when you add them together, you're going to get a zero. So if I write here square root of 15, 
plus minus square root of 15, that's going to be equal to 0. And, uh, <coughs> and then you have um, minus b by a over here, which is equal to, b, your b is equal to, your b is simply equal to 0. So that's equal to 0 over 1. So 0 is equal to 0, that means that this relationship holds. Okay. And then when you say that you, we also have alpha beta is equal to C by A. And what that means is that negative, basically square root of 15 times negative square root of 15 is equal to C by A, which is equal to negative 15 by, negative 15 by 1 negative 15 by 1. So this is equal to negative 15 is equal to negative 15. So this relationship also holds here. Now, so and then you need to basically, um, when you do an, when you do the exercise, you need to kind of think in terms of what happens when your C is equal to 0, when your B, when your B is equal to 0, your of course, A cannot be equal to zero, otherwise you would get a first degree equation or polynomial. But otherwise, uh, if you can, if you analyze these situations while you're solving these problems, then, um, then physics is basically mainly the same thing, meaning that uh, you have some phenomenon, some phenomenon in nature that you're kind of studying or you're watching and then we basically write those write our observations in terms of algebraic uh, ident uh, algebraic uh, equations and then do different things in terms of um, you do different kind of mathematical operations on those on those um, and those algebraic relationships in order to see what's what's going to happen to that phenomenon. And 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 the whole thing is basically very simple and basic things like polynomials, equations, and um, proportions and things like that. There is nothing more than there is nothing more to that. But uh, for example, a good physicist is 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 the kind of is the kind of physics, of course, there has to be, I mean, um, ex apart from math, um, there are other characteristics of a good physicist, but, but, but basically the math has to have been developed well in a, in a, for example, in a good physicist. <coughs> so the next exercise that we have is 3x squared minus x minus 4. 3x squared minus x minus 4, and let's call it p of x. Now, if you want to factorize this, 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 uh, polynomial, what you need to do is, um, so you're looking for two numbers a and b, such that a times b is equal to negative 12, 3 times negative 4, and a plus b is equal to negative 1. So, uh, 4 and 3, I suppose. And negative 4, positive 3. And that's, that's, that's basically that. So, it's equal to 3x squared minus 4x plus 3x minus 4. And then I take these two together. So, I take it 3x out, x plus 1. Take a negative 4 out between these two x plus 1, and then this is equal to 3x minus 4 times x plus 1. Now, if I want to find the 0 here, I had to set set my polynomial to 0. That means that 3x minus 4 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. That means that either 3x minus 4 is equal to 0, or x plus 1 is equal to 0, 3x is equal to positive 4, <coughs> x is equal to 4 thirds, and here x is equal to negative 1. So the two zeros of your polynomial, 
are 4 thirds and negative 1. Now in order to in order to uh, find the in order to find the uh, uh, the the relationship between the zeros and the and the and the and the coefficients here we said that for example alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a and that's four thirds plus negative one is four thirds minus one is equal to negative b by a so negative of negative negative of negative one negative b by a which is equal to three now I can write this as three thirds, so that's four thirds minus three thirds. Three thirds is equal to one. Is equal to one thirds, and four thirds minus three thirds is equal to one thirds. Is equal to one thirds. So that this one holds here. And you know we also said that alpha beta is equal to c by a. So alpha beta is four thirds times negative one which is equal to negative four thirds is equal to c by a so negative four thirds so this one also holds here so that's basically that now we have a couple more examples here these are all important and helpful so we'll go through them one by one 